be welcome to the celebration of our communion service in the Russian Orthodox Church. Before we start, I wish to say just a few words about it. The Orthodox Church claims to be in continuity of life and of faith with the primitive church, the apostolic band, and their successors. In life, because throughout its history, and its recent history more perhaps than ever, we have brought a witness of life and of death. 75 years on, the Russian church has shed its blood for its faith in Soviet Russia and is now emerging out of martyrdom into the free proclamation of our faith. And our faith is that of the gospel. We proclaim that truly God became man in Christ, that the fullness of the Godhead abided in him. We proclaim that he was truly the son of God and therefore born of the virgin according to humanity, God according to the fatherhood of his eternal father. We proclaim also that the church is the place where man and God meet and the very mystery of a deep communion which must result in God becoming all in all in us, filling all space and all human beings becoming partakers of the divine nature. And we believe supremely in the resurrection, in the bodily resurrection of Christ, in its historicity, which we keep today and proclaim at present. Being in our church, you will find that there is deep silence in it, because we believe that in order to stand before God and to pray to him, in order to commune with him, we must first drop into deep contemplative silence and listen to the Holy Spirit speaking mysteriously in our hearts. We also believe that the communion service is not a memorial, but that we are brought mysteriously by the power of God again into the upper room and that the celebrant of our service is neither the priest nor the bishop, but the Lord Jesus Christ himself and the Holy Spirit. And so let us all, with awe, with love, with faith, enter into the upper room, stand and sit around our Lord and partake in communion, in prayer and in sacrament. I welcome you again to this service and I hope that you will share with us in awe and joy our celebration. In Eastern churches, only one Eucharist is celebrated a day. This liturgy lasts for about one and a half hours. We are joining the congregation half an hour after the service has begun, just before Alleluia is sung, before the reading of the Gospel. with you, O readers. 
Because it was a preparation, that is the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, an honorable counselor, which also waited for the kingdom of God, came and went in boldly unto Pilate and craved the body of Jesus. And Pilate marveled if he were already dead, and calling unto him the centurion, he asked him whether he had been any while dead. And when he knew it, or the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph, and he bought fine linen, and took him down, and wrapped him in the linen, and laid him in a sepulchre, which was hewn out of a rock, and rolled a stone unto the door of the sepulchre. And Mary Magdalene, and Mary, the mother of Joseph, beheld where he was laid. And when the Sabbath was past, Mary Magdalene, and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome had brought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came unto the sepulchre at the rising of the sun, and they said among themselves, who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulchre? And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, and it was very great. And entering into the sepulchre, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment, and they were affrighted. And he says unto them, Be not afraid. Ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go your way. 
Tell the disciples and Peter that he goes before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him, and he, as he said unto you. And they went out quickly and fled from the sepulcher, for they trembled and were amazed. Neither said they anything to any man, for they were afraid. of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. We keep today with veneration the memory of those women who not only came to the sepulcher to anoint the body of Jesus, their teacher and their master after his crucifixion, but who also alone of all his followers, had stood afar off on Calvary. All the disciples except John had fled for fear of the Jews. All those who had followed him or met him when he came into Jerusalem on the Feast of Palms and had greeted him with shouts of glory were now silent and worse than this. Many of them had been among those who had cried, crucify him, crucify him. Only these women did not abandon him and his mother and his beloved disciple. And how that? Because the disciples and all those who had stood by him in the days of triumph had believed with their minds that he was the Messiah and believed and hoped that his coming was the deliverance of Israel, the beginning of a worldly and earthly triumph. The women did not need this. Their faith, their devotion to Christ was in their heart. It was enough for them to know him, to venerate him, to worship and serve him. They did not need any victory, any triumph that would make him more than he was because he was he who had changed their lives. He was he who had brought eternity into a world where they had been prisoners of sin, of evil, of fear, and of oppression. And among them, we remember particularly St. Mary Magdalene. All the women had been present in the crucifixion but she alone, according to one of the Gospels, had stayed behind looking how he was being put to rest in the sepulchre. And then she stayed there in the darkness of the night. Why she, of all? Isn't it because, as the Lord had said, he or she to whom more is forgiven <coughs> loves more? Indeed, she had been a sinner and Christ had not only forgiven her, he had given her new life. His word had entered into her heart as life eternal. His image had transfigured her life. He was her savior long before his crucifixion and his resurrection. And so alone of them, she stayed at the grave, weeping over the death of one who had filled her life to the brim. 
And when she heard the voice speaking to her and saying, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? Through her tears, through her despair, through her heart ache, she did not recognize him who spoke. And she answered, they have taken away from me my Lord, and I do not know where they have put him. And then the Lord spoke to her and said one word only, Mary. And at that time, at that moment, she recognized the sound of her name spoken in a way unique, in the way in which he had spoken when he had made an end to her life of sin and started her into a life of glorious eternity and of sacrificial love. And she turned to him and recognized him and proclaimed him her master and her Lord. And the Lord warned her, do not yet touch me. You are still attached to my earthly form. You are still attached to the relationship we had in the course of these days, where I was indeed your savior, when you saw with the eyes of faith, with your intuition, that I was more than a man, that I was God incarnate, that in me, in my flesh, the fullness of God abided. But yet, you are still attached to my physical presence. Touch me not. A moment will come when you will unite yourself with me in spirit, when you will have transcended all earthly attachment, and then nothing will be able to separate you from me and from any other of my faithful disciples. But go, go to my brethren and my sisters, Go to them that are hidden now for fear. Go to them who have lost hope. Go to them who have lost faith. Go to them whose love has turned into pain and tell them that I am risen. And she, first among all the disciples, went and proclaimed to the world the resurrection of Christ. She turned to the whole world and to us, and we also hear her words. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Christos Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Amen. Let us all say with all our soul and with all our mind, let us sing. Lord have mercy. Almighty Lord, the God of our fathers, we pray unto thee. Do thou hear and have mercy. The litanies, series of prayers, which follow the gospel and sermon, remember all people in their various needs, including those who have departed our world but are alive in the kingdom of God. It is to this kingdom the Eucharist takes us. Again we pray for our most blessed Lord and Father Alexis, Patriarch of Moscow and of all Russia, of Bishop Anatoly, and of all our brotherhood in Christ. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Also we pray for our Sovereign Lady Queen Elizabeth and for all the royal family, for this country, 
for those in seats of authority and for all her people, for the country of Russia, for our respective countries, and for all their people and their salvation. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. The Orthodox liturgy is full of joy and beauty. It is this joy that is expressed in singing and ritual, in vestments and in sensing, which has so often been denounced as unnecessary. Unnecessary it is indeed. Beauty is never necessary, functional or useful. When expecting someone whom we love, we put a beautiful tablecloth on the table and decorate it with candles and flowers. We do all this not out of necessity, but out of love. And the church is love, expectation and joy. Thou who didst create this world to thy glory and for its eternal joy, grant that all those who oppose thy word may be converted and give glory unto thee, together with all the faithful, in true faith and in the purity of their life, Almighty Creator, the Savior of the world, do the hearken and be swift to show mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Also we pray thee for them to cast down all heresy, season and apostasy, and to spread abroad in our land, in all places the dominion, piety and devotion. Do thou bring back all those who have strayed from the true faith to the knowledge of thy truth, and unite them again to the Holy Orthodox Church. Almighty Lord, we earnestly entreat thee, do thou hear and be swift to show mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. As once thou didst work thy marvels in Paul, the persecutor of thy faithful people, making him Paul, then apostle, so now, in these days of our tribulation, Look down with mercy upon those who hate us and wrong us, who devise and work evil against us. Let them not perish on account of us sinners, but turn their hearts to the knowledge of thy truth. Almighty Creator, the Savior of the world, we earnestly entreat thee, do thou hearken, and be swift to show mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Also we pray for our brethren, a priest, for the monks, and for all our brethren and sisters in Christ. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Also we pray for the blessed, ever-memorable, holy Orthodox Patriarchs, for all devout kings and right-believing queens, for the fathers of the churches of God and of this holy place, for all our fathers, brethren and sisters who have departed this life before us and our rest here, or in all the world, asleep in the Lord. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Also we pray for life, health, peace, salvation, visitation, and the blessing of God 
upon all the members of our diocese and of this parish, of all those who pray with us at this time, and for all those whom we carry lovingly in our hearts. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Also we pray that thou, for them that bring forth the fruit of good works in this holy and venerable temple, for them that toil and them that sin, and for the rest of thy people that wait for thy great and bountiful mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. For thou, O God, art merciful, thou lovest mankind, and unto thee we ascribe glory, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, now and forever, and world without end. Amen. Have mercy upon us, O God, after the multitude of thy mercy. We pray unto thee, do thou hear, and have mercy. We pray for the souls of the servants of God now departed, that they would as grant them repose and forgive them all their willful sins and unwitting transgressions. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Make their souls to rest. Our Lord, our God, where the righteous do rest. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. For the mercy of God, the kingdom of heaven, and release of their sins, O Christ, our immortal King and our God, we beseech thee. to the resurrection, the life, and the repose of the departed servants of Christ our God. And we give glory unto thee, together with thy unbegotten Father, and thy most holy and gracious and life-giving spirit, now and forever, and world without end. With this litany, we approach the Eucharistic offering, the entrance of the holy gifts of bread and wine. To Orthodox, as Christ's life is offering and sacrifice, so also our life in Him and the whole life of the Church are offering and sacrifice, the offering of ourselves and each other and the whole world through and in love. In the Cherubic Hymn, which precedes and follows the offertory entrance with the bread and wine, we are called to lay aside all the cares of this life, for we are now to receive the King of all. Thus, in the form of bread and wine, material from creation, molded into new form by human hands, is offered to God with the acknowledgement that all of creation is God's, and that we are returning to God that which is His. We do not own creation, but are the free agents through whom creation is offered to the Creator.
сердце трясвятую песнь припевающая, Вся камень житейская отложим по печенье. represent the cherubim and sing to the life-giving trinity the thrice holy hymn let us lay aside all the cares of this life that we may receive the king of god of heaven brought in triumph by the ranks of angels alleluia 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 brothers and fellow servants. Forgive me, all oh, of you who been faithful. Lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. May the Lord God be mindful in thy priesthood in his kingdom always, now and forever, and world without end. May the Lord God be mindful in his kingdom of that priesthood. May the Lord God be mindful in his kingdom of our most blessed Lord and Father Alexis, Patriarch of Moscow and of all Russia, of Bishop Anatoly, of all the Episcopate of the Holy Orthodox Church, of all orders of clergy, always, now and forever, and world without end. Remember in his kingdom our Bishop Anthony, Metropolitan of Surur, always, now, and forever, and world without end. May the Lord God be mindful in his kingdom of our sovereign lady Queen Elizabeth and of all the royal family of this country, of those of seats of authority and of all her people, of the country of Russia, of our respective countries, and of all their people, whether dwelling therein or scattered abroad, and of their salvation, always, now and forever, and world without end. May the Lord God be mindful in his kingdom, of the founders of this holy church, of all those who are in sorrow, sickness, adversity or persecution, and of their salvation, always, now and forever, and world without end. May the Lord God be mindful in his kingdom of all his departed servants, of their eternal salvation, always, now, and forever, and world without end. May the Lord God be mindful in his kingdom of you all and of all the faithful Christians, always, now, and forever, and world without end.
исполни молитву нашу, Господи, ви. О предложених честних даре, Господу, помолимся. Святым храме семи с верою, благоговением и страхом Божьим ходавшим Бог, Господу помолимся. О, избавитесь нам от всякие скорби, гнева и нужды, Господу помолимся. This further litany, being sung in Church Slavonic, leads us to the exclamation, Let us love one another so that we may with one mind acknowledge, to which the people respond, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Trinity, Consubstantial, and Co-Eternal. Immediately afterwards, the Nicene Constantinopolitan Creed of 381 is sung in its original form. In the Orthodox tradition, our unity in love is essential to our common faith, and the fullness of our common faith is essential for participation in the common cup. The Eucharist is the sacrament of unity, or as St. Ignatius said in the second century, unity of faith with love. Христианские кончины живота нашего безболезненный и непостыдный мир и доброго ответа на страшном судыше Христове просы. After the creed, the bishop will bless the people with the words the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Then he will lead us into the prayer of thanksgiving to God the Father, said quietly by the bishop, in which we give thanks to the Father for our creation from nothing, for our being raised up when fallen, and for the gift of the kingdom that is to come. After this, we shall sing together with the angels in that kingdom, Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of thy glory, to the Father, who gave his Son, so we should have everlasting life. The bishop will then recall our Lord's words at the Last Supper, and the holy gifts will be raised with the words, Thine of thine own we offer unto thee, before the prayer to God the Father to send his Holy Spirit on us and on the holy gifts. With one mind we may acknowledge the doors, the doors in wisdom let us give heed.
let us stand right, let us stand with fear, let us give heed to present the holy offering in peace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Lift up our hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord. to sing of thee, to bless thee, to praise thee, to give thanks to thee, to worship thee in all places of thy dominion. For thou art God, ineffable, incomprehensible, invisible, unsearchable, art ever, art alike, thou and thine only begotten Son and Holy Spirit. Do thou out of nothing brought us as to be, and when we are fallen, didst raise us up again has brought not undone till thou hast brought us unto heaven and has bestowed upon us thy kingdom for to come. For all these things do we give thanks to thee and to thine only begotten Son and to thy Holy Spirit for all the benefits done unto us, whether known or unknown, whether manifest or hidden. We give thanks to thee also that thou hast pleased to receive this service at our hands Though there attend upon thee thousands of archangels and tens of angels, cherubim and seraphim, having six wings and full of eyes, who all aloft upon the wing, sing, cry loud and shout, uttering the triumph of him. O Master, lover of mankind, we also cry and say, Holy and most holy art thou, and thine only begotten Son, and thy Holy Spirit. Holy and most holy art thou, and thy glorious majesty, who has so loved thy world, thou didst give thine only begotten Son, that all that believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life, who being come, and having accomplished all that was appointed for our sakes, in the night in which he was given up, or rather gave up himself for the life of the world, took bread into his most pure and holy and spotless hand, and when he had given thanks and blessed and hallowed it, he broke it and gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you unto remission of sins. Drink ye all of this, this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you 
and for many unto remission of sins. Godless worship unto thee, and pray, and beseech, and implore thee, send down thy Holy Spirit upon us, and upon these gifts here set forth. O gracious Lord, take not away from, from us thy most Holy Spirit, who may the third hour that is sent down and upon the apostles, but renew us who pray unto thee. Make me a clean heart, O God, renew the right spirit within me. O gracious Lord, take not away from us thy most Holy Spirit, whom at the third hour thou didst send down upon thine apostles, but renew us who pray unto thee. Pass me not away from thy presence. Take not the Holy Spirit from me. O gracious Lord, take not away from us thy most Holy Spirit, whom in the third hour that is sent down upon the apostles, but renew us who pray unto thee, and make this bread the precious body of thy Christ. Amen. Amen. And what is in this cup, the precious blood of thy Christ. Amen. Amen. Thou thyself, by the Holy Spirit, having wrought the change. Amen. 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 that they may be to them that partake thereof and to sobriety of soul, the remission of sins, the participation of the Holy Spirit, the fulfillment of the kingdom of heaven, and to boldness towards thee, not unto judgment, nor unto condemnation. Also we offer this reasonable worship unto thee, for them that rest in faith, our forefathers and fathers, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, confessors, ascetics, and for all the spirit of the just in faith made perfect. Especially our most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious lady, Mary, ever virgin and mother of God. The liturgy is served on earth, and this means in the time and space of this world. But if it is served on earth, it is accomplished in heaven, in the new time of the new creation, in the time of the Holy Spirit. During the Easter hymn we are hearing, the bishop has been quietly saying a prayer of intercession, a prayer for others and for the whole church. This prayer and the present litany, which will follow, conclude with our Father. Our transmission must end fairly soon before our father. Among the first, remember, O Lord, 
our most blessed Lord and Father Alexis, Patriarch of Moscow and of Russia, and Bishop Anatoly of Kerch, and our Bishop Anthony, Metropolitan of Soror, whom do thou preserve unto thy holy church in peace, safety, honor, and welfare unto length of days, rightly dividing the word of thy truth.